Hi everyone, it's Allie's Travels. Um, so I just wanted to do a video on uh, Italy. That is the next place I want to travel to. So hopefully I can go there. So there's several different places I want to go in Italy. And so first I want to go see the Iceman. You know, the, the corpse that they found in I think it was 1991. Um, they found him right between the border of Austria and Italy. And um, yeah, it turns out he is over 5,000 years old. So I want to go see him, his body in the museum. Um, also, I want to go see Rome, of course, see the Colosseum and all that fun stuff. And I want to see Herculaneum or Pompeii and or. Um, I'd like to see both of the towns, but I hear one of them is um, busy all the time. It's probably Pompeii and that Herculaneum is easier to get into. So either one of those. And then the last place I want to go to is Palermo. Um, I want to look at the Capuchin catacombs there. So yeah, first place um, tell you a little bit about the Iceman. Okay, his name was uh, Otzi, I think is how you say it, because that's the name of the valley he was found in, in the mountains. Okay, so Otzi, also called the Iceman, is the natural mummy of a man who lived between 3400 and 3100 BCE. The mummy was found in September 1991 in the Ozal Alps on the border between Austria and Italy. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, interesting information on him, so I'd love to see his mummy. Um, they think he was about 40 years of age uh, when he died, and they could tell that he had um, hardening of the arteries, which is very, very interesting because um, the scientists thought that that was a modern disease, but he had it, and he obviously was not a couch potato did a lot of hiking um, in the mountains. They think he was a high altitude shepherd. So it's interesting. Um, he obviously wasn't overweight or anything like that. He had a pretty good diet. And he still had hardening of the arteries. So I think it's something that's, that's in your genes. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see his body. It's in it like a refrigerator, I think, or maybe a freezer. Um, so yeah, would love to see that. Um, so the other places I want to go to, Palermo is the next one. Palermo's got these amazing uh, catacombs. Let's see. Capuchin catacombs. They're just Amazing. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. Okay, the Capuchin Catacombs of Palermo are burial catacombs in Palermo, Sicily, southern Italy. Today they provide a somewhat macabre tourist attraction as well as an extraordinary historical record. Palermo's Capuchin Monastery outgrew its original cemetery in the 16th century, and monks began to excavate crypts below it. In 1599, they mummified one of their number recently, sorry, 
1599, they mummified one of their number, recently dead brother Silvestro of Gubbio, and placed him in the catacombs. The bodies were dehydrated on the racks of ceramic pipes in the catacombs and sometimes later washed with vinegar. Some of the bodies were embalmed and others enclosed in seal glass cabinets. In sealed glass cabinets. Friars were preserved with their everyday clothing and sometimes with ropes they had worn as a penance. Originally, the catacombs were intended only for the dead friars. However, in the following centuries, it became a status symbol to be entombed into the Capuchin catacombs. In their wills, local luminaries would ask to be preserved in certain clothes or even to have their clothes changed at regular intervals. Priests wore their clerical vestments. Others were clothed according to the contemporary fashion. Relatives would visit to pray for the deceased and also to maintain the body in presentable condition. I think that's so interesting. The catacombs were maintained through the donations of the relatives of the deceased. Each new body was placed in a temporary niche and later placed into a more permanent place. As long as the contributions continued, the body remained in its proper place, but when the relatives did not send money anymore, the body was put aside on a shelf until they resumed payments. Fascinating. Okay, so the other place I mentioned, uh, the places that were just, the cities that were destroyed by Mount Vesuvius. Um, so I think Pompeii is probably the one that has the more tourists and is harder to get into. So maybe I'll just concentrate on Herculaneum because I'd like to see either one of those. Both would be great, but I don't know if it's possible. Okay, Herculaneum was an ancient town located in the modern day commune of Ericolano, Campania, Italy. Sorry, I probably just butchered that. Um, the city was destroyed and buried under volcanic ash and pumice in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Like the nearby city of Pompeii, Herculaneum is famous as one of the few ancient cities to be preserved more or less intact, with no, with no later accretions or modifications. The thick layer of ash that blanketed the town also protected, against, protected it against looting and the elements. Unlike Pompeii, the mainly pyroclastic material that covered Herculaneum carbonized and preserved more wood in objects such as roofs, beds, and doors, as well as other organic-based materials such as food and papyrus. The traditional story is that the city was rediscovered by chance in 1709 during the digging of a well. Remnants of the city, however, were already found during early, earlier earthworks. In the first years after its rediscovery, tunnels were dug at the site by treasure hunters and many artifacts were removed without authorization. Regular excavations began in 1738 and have continued ever since, albeit intermittently. Today, only part of the ancient site has been excavated, and attention and funds have shifted to the preservation of the already excavated parts of the city, rather than focusing on uncovering more areas. Although it was smaller than Pompeii, Herculaneum was a wealthier town. I didn't know that interesting. It was a popular seaside retreat for the Roman elite, which is reflected in the extraordinary destiny of grand and luxurious houses with, for example, far more lavish use of colored marble, marble cladding. Famous buildings of the ancient city include the, the Villa of the Papyri and the so-called boat houses 
in which the skeletal remains of at least 300 people were found. Wow, I just love history. It's so interesting. Okay, so... Um, maybe I'll do a, a quick thing on Pompeii as well. Pompeii is a vast archaeological site in southern Italy's Campania region. I hope I said that right. Near the coast of the Bay of Naples. Once a thriving and sophisticated Roman city, Pompeii was buried under meters of ash and pumice after the catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The preserved site features excavated ruins of streets and houses that visitors can freely freely explore. Mm, this makes me so excited to go to Italy. I hope I can go this next year, but who knows with the coronavirus. Okay, and then Rome. Most people have heard of Rome. Um, says about it. Okay, Rome is the capital city and a special commune of Italy, as well as the capital of the Lazio region. The city has been a major human settlement for almost three millennia, with two... 2 million residents, it is also the country's most populated commune. So, as I was saying, um, yeah, I would like to travel to Italy. Um, the last place I was talking about that I want to see is Rome. Um, and I think everybody's heard of Rome. Let's see what it says about it. In the hist in histori historiography, ancient Rome is Roman civilization from the founding of the Italian city of Rome in the eighth century BC to the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the fifth century AD. Encompassing the Roman Kingdom, Roman Republic, and Roman Empire until the fall of the Western Empire. That's a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, I want to see stuff like the Colosseum. Um, you know, things like that. And there's a lot of stuff. Um, about it on Google, like all the best places to go to and all that. Um, so yeah, I would just love to go to Italy and see these places. And I, hopefully I can do it on about a thousand dollars. That is about how much I have saved. So I'm hoping to go for, you know, a couple weeks and I don't know, maybe go with a tour group. I think it's safer to go with a tour group, um, for sure. But then you have to be up and, you know, you're always doing stuff. Anyway, um, thanks for watching my video. And don't forget to like and subscribe and to show it to all your friends. And, yeah, uh, have a good night. And I will see you next week. Bye.